most of the state so far this year has seen some snow and sub freezing temperatures, but that's not sending ticks packing. Experts say ticks carrying bacteria that cause Lyme disease can be active anytime temperatures climb above freezing. And cases of tick-borne illnesses haven't slowed down either. As of November 18th, the Maine Center for Disease Control and Prevention was reporting more than 1,000 cases of Lyme, 656 cases of anaplasmosis, and 131 cases of babesiosis. A one group especially at risk for Lyme disease this time of year is hunters and their dogs. New Center Maine's Vivian Lee is here to tell us more about this. Hey, well, as, as you guys know, Maine's biggest hunting seasons are winding down in the next several weeks, but if temperatures are above 32 degrees, late fall can actually be a peak time to encounter adult deer ticks. Now, experts say ticks are moving into new areas of the state, including near the Canadian border. Dana Johnson has spent most of his life hunting and fishing. He has a business trapping nuisance animals. I call myself the screech catcher. But all those years in the woods meant Johnson has found a lot of ticks on himself. Most of them deer ticks, which transmit Lyme disease. I was pulling them off every day. You know, it was, it, it came with the job. Several years ago, after finding two embedded ticks, Johnson started feeling worn down. Getting on a ladder or climbing his deer stand was impossible. It attacked my muscles and my joints. You felt weak? Or? Oh, yeah, wicked weak. And then it went downhill. I drive my four wheeler right up to He suffered from memory loss and debilitating pain. A doctor prescribed a long course of antibiotics. He slowly began to recover but lost 15 pounds of muscle. Going deep into the woods to hunt is a thing of the past. I can't walk very far now because my hips hurt. To protect himself, Johnson wears camouflage clothing treated with the repellent known as permethrin. Deer are one of the preferred hosts for ticks, providing blood female ticks need to lay thousands of eggs during a tick's two-year life cycle. So experts are reminding hunters that when they bring their fresh kills home, they're likely bringing ticks home as well. One thing they can do is put a large tarp or small swimming pool filled with water under a hanging deer. When live ticks drop off of the deer, they get trapped in the water. If you have any kind of open wound, you should not be field dressing an animal, butchering an animal. Megan May is an associate professor of microbiology at the University of New England and an expert on infectious diseases. Can you contract Borreliosis or Lyme disease specifically from eating venison? No, you can't. It's very susceptible to heat destruction. Meanwhile, scientists are continuing to track where ticks are heading in Maine. They're also collecting them at deer tagging stations. We get them relatively fresh coming into the stations, and so we can pull them off pretty, pretty readily. Yeah. Lubelchik is a vector ecologist and field biologist from the Maine Medical Center's Research Institute. He, along with USM student Jake Angelico, are dragging for ticks in Savage Park in Augusta. I've got a, probably about 10 so far. Now, researchers are collecting ticks from two different locations in every county in Maine. They're trying to get at least between 20 to 50 ticks per location. That wasn't hard here in Augusta. They collected that in less than 30 minutes. The ticks are adults, their fourth life stage, and can withstand a variety of temperatures and conditions. They tend to be a little less fickle about how cold it is, how dry it is. The ticks will be tested for three different pathogens that cause Lyme, anaplasmosis, and babesiosis. Researchers have found small pockets of ticks in Jackman near the Canadian border. It really is a surprise that they are getting established in some of these northern locations and seem to be doing just fine, you know, at this point. Um, you know, and, and of course that does raise some questions about climate. Uh, and it does raise some questions about things like deer management. It's a different story for another team of researchers from the University of Maine. We um, didn't find ticks north of Orono. Graduate student Michelle Volk is also trying to pinpoint where the ticks are in Maine and what diseases they carry. Her team set up tick traps at five different locations throughout the state to see if ticks can live through the winter. The research found that more than 70% of ticks survived under snowbanks near Millinocket and in Presque Isle in controlled settings. Students dragged for ticks in those areas this summer, but came up empty-handed. It would have been um, quite a find if we did end up finding them in Presque Isle. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess I'm not, I'm not really that surprised that they're, they haven't made their way up there yet. Johnson, in the meantime, is always on the lookout for ticks no matter what season. He may be moving a lot slower due to the lasting effects of Lyme, but he'll never stop doing what he loves. They're not going to beat me out of the woods. <laughs>
Now, Lou Belichick and his team plan to keep a close eye on the ticks found in the Jackman area and follow their migration over the next several years. Now, Volk's data on ticks and what diseases they carry could be posted in state parks and public lands one day. That's the hope of her project. And we'll have more information, of course, about Lyme disease and other really important information on our website and mobile apps. We always have that for our viewers. Thank you, Viv. Thank you.